Hello there, I'm Turin, and welcome to Cogwheel Farm! This is the home of my newest Stardew Valley farmer, Karen, who started life in Cyberpunk 2077. This is very different from filling people with bullets and hacking them to pieces! Uh, yeah, I'd say, yeah. Yeah, you're right about that. Today, Karen and I are going to be showing you how to make early game watering much easier, more fun, and really satisfying as well. Breaking down what we're going to be looking at today, I'm going to be showing you better techniques for watering with the early watering cans. I'm going to show you how the basic sprinkler can actually be good and not make you want to overlook it with these really fun designs that I've come up with for you. Let's start with the basic watering can. Going tile by tile to cover your crop just feels awful. It takes ages. You thirst for your first watering can upgrade. But what if I told you you were doing it wrong and that there was a better way to do it? Instead of going tile by tile to water your crops, stand in the middle of eight tiles and click every single crop around you in a square. You don't have to move it all and then you click the one under your feet. Then you move across and you repeat what you just did. It's way easier than going across every single tile. Of course, this is something you can only really do on PC, but it feels so smooth to do. You make less mistakes and the whole process just seems way faster. Plot your crops out in blocks of nine to suit this watering technique. And you'll be delighted to find that when you want to put quality sprinklers into your main crop later in the game, you won't have to do that much to change your design. You're planning for the future as well. Okay, let's move on to the copper watering can. You'll be in such a hurry to use this one, but there's a really efficient way to use this one as well. See, we can hit three at a time, but what we should really do is stand in the middle of three tiles, because now, without moving, we can click either side of ourselves with a charged up watering can blast. It's really efficient. Rather than trying to cover your entire crop willy-nilly with bursts of three tile watering, you can really efficiently slide along the rows. Stand in the middle of three tiles, blast the center one, and the left, and the right. Then move on to the next one the next group of three tiles and do the same. Now this technique is so valid, you're gonna use it for every watering can you use going forward. Steel watering cans, as you can see, cover five tiles. So it would be a good idea for me to change up how I grow things to match the watering can, but it's the same technique. I stand in the middle of three tiles. I click left and right. Here's gold, just to show you just how much of this carries on. The full blast literally covers the three tile radius that we were talking about. Nine tiles covered by the full blast of the golden watering can. And then of course, the iridium watering can doubles that. So putting these techniques into practice right from the get go means that you're prepared for every watering can. Now moving on to the basic sprinkler, which is incredibly cheap to make and a real tragedy that most of us skip it and just don't like it because it's so aesthetically unsatisfying. It doesn't feel like it helps much. So here we are with the unappealing basic layout for the uh, basic sprinkler. And even if we fill in the gaps and water around it, it doesn't really feel like we're getting much benefit. We've got to come outside and do four singular patches of watering around the basic sprinkler if we want to fill it out with crops. It doesn't feel too good. It's definitely a lot faster than watering all these crops manually, but it feels a little bit tedious to have to go around where the sprinkler is missed. Simply by slapping some paving tiles around the basic sprinkler, we can change the game immediately. This is way more satisfying than just leaving the sprinkler unattended. It's very symmetrical. We can put a path between it and even start building a garden. Check this out. Now you can imagine you're in an English country garden. And the best thing is, you're actually prepared for your next sprinkler upgrade because all you've got to do is remove the tiles, like so. Change up your sprinkler in the center. Maybe even put a tile underneath the sprinkler as well. And as a result, you won't have had to drastically change your layout to include your new sprinklers. It's a garden ready for the future. Now going beyond the basic layout, I've come up with something well, me and Karen have come up with something we're calling the sprinkler flower. You lose a couple of tiles with this one, but I think it looks like really organic and nice. 
You will be losing two crop tiles from the middle, but this is only one of the designs. So if you're, if you're looking for a really efficient design, we're going to get to that. But as Karen grows all the crops and we can see this looks really aesthetically pleasing and feels like a really organic feature that could be on your farm. Let me show you how we built it. As you can see here, we stuck the two sprinklers close together because we wanted to create a pattern that gave us the feeling of a solid chunk of crops being watered together. That was the idea. We put the extra sprinklers on the sides like so and create the pattern. Now I'm using UI info mod to show me my sprinkler radius, but you'll actually be able to find the shape of your sprinkler radius just by hoeing the ground around it anyway. As you see, as we actually hoe the ground, it actually reveals a hate shape in the ground. And there we go, there's the hate shape, it looks lovely. And what we can do immediately is use different types of flooring that we get in early game to decorate around the sprinklers. Brick is a little bit harder to get, but you will be able to get these kinds of flooring immediately. This one's really satisfying because when you walk along it, you get that lovely gritty noise. And cobblestone is kind of interchangeable. You can do a lot of things with it because if you pick a cobblestone back up, you actually change its formation on the ground. These can be really satisfying. You can take so much time to make them look good and make your basic sprinklers feel like they're actually doing something on top of watering the crops. They look good too. Now here's, here's the version of the sprinkler flower, which is for the super efficient players. This is the sprinkler diamond. This is what it looks like when you use every tile available to the basic sprinkler. Nothing is left out. Of course, that does cause gaps to happen in the design, but we can actually make the most of these designs. If you were growing flowers, you could put beehives on the empty four tiles next to each flower. And we can pop a scarecrow directly in the middle of this. You can literally cover your farmland in these things. These little uh, hives or nodes of sprinklers, which completely look after themselves once you've set them up. This is what it looks like with fully grown blueberry crops on them. It looks beautiful. I'm a big fan of the uh, sprinkler diamond. It, it can work as a centerpiece for your farm. You can expand upon it, grow it out, change it up with other sprinklers. As you can see, I've got a quality sprinkler up there at the moment. And in the future, I'll be able to make adjustments to the sprinkler diamond and actually put quality sprinklers inside of it as I move along. This is Karen's farm in autumn. And as you can see, everything we've put into practice is in place here. We've got this very organic farmer's garden feeling going on with a well there. We've got a big crop of pumpkins coming in. We've even got a smaller sprinkler diamond to make the most of a spare sprinkler we had. It's so much better than just dropping it on the floor and hating its existence. With just a little bit of cobblestone path, it looks so much better and helps to make this farm look very natural because I'm going for a very natural aesthetic on this farm as opposed to super efficiency. Thank you for your uh, hard work, Karen. Thank you for your help with the video. And uh, I really hope we helped some people out with this because the beginning of the game can be a real struggle with watering. Well, one thing's for certain, I'm not going to struggle for food because I'm going to have so much pumpkin pie now thanks to the amazing techniques I was taught by Turin on YouTube. The uh, check is in the mail, right, Turin? You going to send me that? Karen, you're a video game character. How? Oh, Hello there, it's me, Hamish. You know, the actual star of this chat. God damn it, more new character. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Check out some others. And if you want to support the channel via our Kofi page, you can go up on my uh, fridge like these people. Yeah, I'll stick you on my fridge just like my kids' uh, artwork. Yeah. Hamish, that, that's not meant to be the idea. It's not meant to be Patrick. Shut up, get out of here. This is my segment of the video, god damn it. Please give me this.